I have a buddy who's a really good machinist. Machine me these out, and these things are a perfect match to this. One thing we had talked about during the tuning, he had been thinking about it, and our idle was best when we had good map sensor readings. We haven't been getting very good map sensor readings, and we both kind of think it's probably because where I have my max map sensor picking up is right off of the uh, idle air control manifold that I made, and we're wondering if maybe it's getting too much atmosphere in there. When it, when the idle when the IAC opens up, the map sensor reading goes bad. And when the IAC is completely closed, we have a real good map reading. And it's easier to tune when you have good map readings on speed density. So uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pull the intake back off. I'm going to block that port off on the idle air control manifold I made. And I'm going to try two different locations for a map sensor coming off. I'm going to put one tube. I'm going to cross two ports, two intake ports into one. I'm going to join them into one and I'm going to run that to the map sensor. And then I'm also going to try just running the map sensor off of the little uh, what I would call like a log that I have connecting each intake runner. So I'm going to pull the intake off now and make it to where we can change it around while we tune and figure out which is the best place to go off of. And then I'll block that map port off on the idle air control valve. Alright, here's my two ideas for my map sensor. I'm going to show you real quick. I got a tapped port there, tap port there, and these come down into a Y. I'm going to run that up on top of the intake somewhere uh, so we can check the map reading off of that. And also, I teed into here. We'll see which one works best. Unfortunately, whichever one doesn't work, I'll, since I'm so crazy about making things right, I'll probably pull the intake back off and eliminate whichever one we don't use. So. Uh, kind of hoping this one works. It'll be a little cleaner when I'm done. But I'm just going to zip tie the map sensor up on top of the intake somewhere while we're doing some tuning see which one works best and then I'll find a place to permanently mount it. Also while the uh, idle air control valve that I made was off of there I decided to uh, plug the extra holes. There was another hole here, a hole here, and a hole here. So I just uh, filled it in with some uh, filler rod, welded it up, and then uh, machined her back off lightly. So it looks a little better, even though no one will ever see it but me. So at least I know it's done right. Got the intake back on. And here's my two sensors for my map sensor. The lines for them. This one's coming off the ports, which is the one I hope we use. And then this one's coming off of two of the intake runners teed into one. So... I got that one capped off, and that one's just sitting there. I'll tidy it up later, but I just want to be able to swap them easily. we we'll to see which one works the best. Uh, everything's buttoned up. Uh, should be ready to roll with this thing as soon as Pete's ready to tune it. All right, another thing I was going to show you guys, these are the velocity stacks for the intake, which I haven't ran yet. And they have this little kind of flange here. I don't know if you can see it's a stepped flange. And uh, they're designed to have an air air box go behind them for an air filter to go in front and uh, I don't have I don't know if I'm gonna have the room for one but for right now I wanted to just put the air horns on it and then I'm gonna run like sprint car covers over it when I'm driving on the street after I get this thing tuned in and I wanted 
want them to stick out a little further, so I have a buddy who's a really good machinist machine me these out, and these things are a perfect match to this. Show you here how they go on. Push on just like that, and the holes will line up. They're the exact size of the original stack, except it adds an inch. It's like a little longer than an inch to, to the stack, so then I'll have a little longer stack. It'll look a little cooler. So all I need to do now is find the right size bolts for this thing. Then I can get those bolted on and look pretty cool, I think. Sticking out a little further than normal. So if you have a Gen V intake, LS7 intake with this exact type of air horn on it, I can probably get you get, get you these for a decent deal versus uh, buying a longer stack, which they actually didn't make a longer stack for the LS7 style. That's going to do it for this week's update. Sorry I didn't get any tuning in and sorry this video is a little late, but uh, this time of the year, Christmas time, people have a bunch of Christmas parties and I was also in uh, New Mexico last weekend, so uh, didn't get a whole lot of chance to work on the truck, but I am still doing stuff to it as you can see. And next week, uh, we'll get some tuning in. Pete is scheduled to come out here Thursday, so hopefully Thursday we'll get this thing more dialed in. And uh, I did order an HP tuners myself so that I can learn how to do it. I'm not going to be able to do this truck, I'm sure, but uh, if I can kind of figure out how to work some of the tuning stuff, like little things come up on this, I can do it myself, so that'll help me out, and I'd like to learn it anyway, so it's going to be a big, huge learning curve that's not exactly easy to learn on the HP tuners, but I figure if I watch some other videos they have online and other things that will help me out a lot, and I can maybe fumble my way through it. I'm not totally illiterate when it comes to tuning stuff. I've tuned a blown card about 1,800 horsepower uh, mechanically, but it's not electronic, but Something similar should apply, I think, back and forth. If not, I guess I'll tell you so. But anyways, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.